All right. So <clears throat> in the last recorded lectures, you have covered the planning and risk assessment section alongside the audit procedures. And even in the last live session, we discussed that question number one is about the audit risk and the business risk and apart from the audit procedures. And then we have apart from the ethics as well. So today we are going to discuss further regarding the audit risk and business risk alongside the standards and the audit procedures. So first of all, starting from the IFRS 2 share-based payment. IFRS 2 share-based payment. Now, I told you that you need to know the accounting standards. The logic for that is that you are auditing the financial statements which are prepared from the standards, using the standards. That means that standards are applied in the preparation of the financial statements. So say, for example, there's a company who has given the share options to their directors. So that means they will be performing the transaction as per IUFRS2. Now, if you are the auditor and you are auditing that particular transaction that they have performed, you need to know, first of all, the accounting treatment of the share base payment. If you're not aware of it, then that means you won't be able to perform the correct audit. So when you are at the planning stage of the audit, what you're doing is you're doing the risk assessment. You are assessing the risk of the material misstatement. Now, you need to know the accounting treatment when you assess the risk. Now, for example, if, if, you, if you came to know that this company is involved in a share-based payment transaction, then a certain risk would be coming to your mind. That certain risk can only come into your mind if you know the accounting treatment. Like for example, uh, the share-based payment has mainly two types of the share-based payment. We have the equity settled share-based payment and we have the cash settled. So we have the equity settled share-based payment and we have the cash settled share-based payment. So in, in the equity settled share-based payment, the entity gives the shares or the share options to their employees or directors and the company is not supposed to pay any cash based on the share price. So the double entry of that is, that means accounting treatment of that is debit, profit or loss because uh, you're recording an expense against the services and credit the sh share based payment. And here it would be the, in the, in the share based payment equity settle, it would be the share options so you credit actually the OCE, other components of equity. So OCE, other components of equity. So if this is when basically when you are recording the share options. And if you're recording the shares directly, then it would be the share capital and the share premium. But in case of the option, it was recording an expense and a corresponding figure goes to the OCE. And the cash settled share based payment against the company called an expense because they are, uh, because they are uh, recording this transaction against uh, the goods or services they are getting. And credit goes to the share based payment obligations because in the cash settled share based payment, the company will be paying the cash based on the share price. So share based payment obligation. Now in the calculation of uh, the equity settled share based payment, the company uses the fair value at grant date. So the company uses the fair value at grant date because that doesn't change every year. For example, if it is about three years, so every, in every year we'll be using the same value, which is the fair value at grant date. But if it is about 
the cash settler share based payment, then the company needs to pay the cash based on share price. And every year at each reporting date, the share price would be different. So that is the fair value at each reporting date. So here there's a fair value at grant date. It remains the same for the years. Uh, for example, if it is about three years, it re remains the same for three years. And it is fair value at each reporting date. The second thing is that when the company is doing the calculation of uh, either the equity settled share based payment or the cash settled share based payment, they are having an accounting estimate. There is an accounting estimate. Accounting estimate of what? Accounting estimate in the calculation of number of rights expected to vest. So for example, if the company has given the share options to their 100 employees or 100 uh, directors, whatever. So number of rights expected to vest that when the company has given the share options to their employees or the directors, they have placed the condition over there that, okay, you have to stay within the company for three years for a certain period of time. So then we, we at each reporting date, we estimated how many of the employees or the directors are going to stay. And based on that, we calculate the number of right expected to vest. So this is an accounting estimate we are using over there. And then when it comes to the conditions, There are two conditions. We have the market conditions and we have the non-market conditions. So with respect to the market condition, for example, uh, base, if, the, if there are conditions, for example, that okay, the share base payment depends upon the share price and for example you have to take the share price up to a certain level then the standard says that the expense should be recorded irrespective of conditions being met And for example, if it is a no market condition, like for example, the number of units and things like that, for example, you have to sell a certain number of units and the sales target, then that is a non market condition that is being accounted for. So, yes, the share based payment equity settle share based payment, cash settle share based payment, the different treatment in the equity settle payment, the double entry is that the treatment is that expenses recorded alongside the corresponding equity and the cash settle expenses recorded alongside the corresponding liability. So there's a difference in the treatment here. Here we have the expense and the equity here, we have expense and the obligation because in the, in the equity settle, there's no need to pay the cash. So there is no liability recorded over there. The company gives the share options. So when it when it remains the share options, it is recorded in the OCE. When the options are converted into actual issues of shares, then OCE is de recognized and the share capital and share premium are credited. And the cash settle, the company records the obligation and that obligation changes at each reporting date because of the share price. And then there are certain accounting estimates involved and then we have the condition. Now, this is the basic IFRS2, although there are many other details within the standard as well. But now let's discuss, first of all, the risk perspective. Now, for example, if in, the, in, in an exam question, in the case study, the examiner says that the company has given the share options to certain number of their directors 
and that is based on the market condition. But the finance director believes that the market condition would not be met and therefore they have not recorded any expense and a corresponding entry. Now, so what do you need to write? Well, first of all, the case study line, the case study line directly from the exam question. So basically we make the heading first. We make the heading, the share base payment. And first of all, we start with the case study line. And after the case study line, we write the accounting treatment that as per IFRS 2, share based payment, expense, and obligation should be recorded. Like, for example, if it is cash settle. And the market condition is not taken into account. The standard says that the market expense and the obligation, for example, should be recorded irrespective of the market condition being met. So the finance director treatment is incorrect. Now, when they have performed the incorrect accounting treatment, you're not going to write there is a risk that they have not recorded the expense and the liability because they're saying you that they have not recorded it. So you write the finance director accounting treatment is incorrect. Expenses and liabilities are understated as a result. But for example, for example, if, they, if, if, there's, if there's a question based on the share based payment and uh, they write, for example, that they, they have given the share options to their 100 directors and now the company is not sure that how many directors are going to stay within the company. And this is the only information over there. Then you, you, you basically write it according to IUFRS2. Uh, the expense should be recorded based on the number of flight expected to West. This is calculated based on the directors, number of directors who will be staying within the company for a certain number of years. So there is a risk that accounting estimate of the company may be incorrect and as a result, incorrect expense uh, and equity may be recorded. Now, here you can write there is a risk because obviously you're not sure whether they have done the correct accounting treatment, whether they have, they have taken the correct number of directors over there or not. So basically the case study line, and then we write the accounting treatment as per standard, don't write the whole standard, just stick to the relevant accounting treatment. If it is about, for example, the market condition, so write exactly the market condition. If it is about, for example, the cash settle, then write the share based payment expense and obligation should be recorded. And then we have the risk thing and also the impact on the financial statements. That means understatement or overstatement. So this is how you are going to write. So now that means you need to know the standard first if you want to earn some good marks from this particular heading. So it starts with the heading and then case study line accounting treatment risk and impact. So for example, if, if without materiality, it can earn you maximum three marks. And for example, if there's materiality involved in that, then 0.5 marks for materiality calculation. Now we know the, the benchmarks for the materiality. So these are profit, asset, and revenue. So 5% or more of profit. one percent or more of asset and 0.5 percent or more of revenue so based on these benchmarks actually we calculate the materi materiality okay so now we have discussed the risk thing now Let's discuss the audit procedure thing as well. Although we have discussed that thing within the audit procedure lecture, but now again, relevant to the standard. For example, 
in the same uh, exam question where the or where you have written the order twist relevant to the share based payment the examiner may ask you for example to, to write the substantive procedure regarding the share based payment transaction so let's discuss the audit procedures or substantive procedures audit procedures basically of two type when you are testing the system that is known as the test of control but here when you are talking about the financial statement figures known as the substantive procedures now i have given you some uh, useful techniques how to make the procedures uh, you may uh, take help with this a e i o u thing analytical procedures that means comparisons and inquiries from the relevant personnel and inspection of documents and physical inspections observations of the processes and procedures and then we have this thing which is recalculations so a e i o u okay then we also discussed that uh, if you want to test uh, the, some transaction and you're making the procedures, what you can do is you check the source documents, documents which give you the initial evidence or the initial evidence which are involved in particular transactions. And then we uh, check the accounting treatment, the treatment within the financial statements. That means the statement of profit or loss, the statement of financial position and then we have the disclosure that means notes to the financial statements and then we have some other records for example such as uh, the bank statements and the budgets and the board minutes sometimes things like that so here we have the a e i o u thing and we have the source documents accounting treatment other records and remember we are making the procedure relevant to the IFRS 2 share based payment. So what are the things that we can check? First of all, do some brainstorming. Now, okay, the source documents, then how many options the company has given to the directors? How many options are there? How many options given to how many directors now because this is a strategic decision made by the company so that you will find the evidence in the board minutes it is actually the board decision this is a board announcement a formal announcement a strategic decision that okay how many how many directors are being given the shared options and what is the condition and how many options are there so board minutes, or for example, if it, if it is a routine thing, then you can see the contracts of those employees and directors. For example, if it is part of a contract as, as part of their remuneration, then you need to see their contracts. So board minutes are the contracts. And then accounting treatment is we know that, for example, if it is an equity settled share-based payment, so, or a cash settle, the expense thing, you should look into the, statement of the profit or loss and the equity or liability thing in the statement of financial position and then the notes to the financial statements obviously we have to give the disclosures because obviously uh, we make certain uh, estimates uh, in reaching this figure, then all the details are being given in the disclosures. So notes of the financial statements. And then what we can do is, for example, inquiries from the finance director, that how many directors are going to stay and how what is, what is the rationale behind that, how they're taking that accounting estimate so this is how you make the procedures now obviously you don't you don't write the points in the exam you have to write the complete procedure so say for example let me write review the board minutes 
review the board minutes to confirm the share options being given to the directors or whatever the employees just make sure that you are writing the relevant as per the exam so review the board minutes to confirm the share options being given to the directors or employees and the conditions attached to it. So this is this is the review the board minutes to confirm the shared options. So you can also write review the board minutes to confirm the number of shared options being given to the number of directors and the conditions attached to it. So you can write this way as well. And similarly, okay, so inquire the finance director, the basis or rational, the basis. So inquire the finance director, the basis or rational they have used in the calculation of number of rights expected to West to confirm the reasonableness of their accounting estimate. And now, now you have seen the uh, board minutes. Now you have also inquired the finance director. You can also write, for example, if there's something part of the remuneration, then other than the board minutes, you can also write the employees contracts. You can also write recalculate the share-based payment expense and the corresponding equity or liability figure, whatever it is the case, equity or liability figure. And agree to the financial statements and the figure which has been recorded within the financial statements. And this procedure review the notes to the financial statements to confirm adequate and complete disclosures are provided as per IFRS 2, earn you the free marks. So you see that you need to know the accounting treatment. And once you know the accounting treatment, you can easily write the risk because the writing the risk needs the accounting treatment. So in the risk part, you need the accounting treatment. And then while making the audit procedures, you again need the accounting treatment. So accounting treatment is the key over here. So accounting treatment, you, you can see at least there are three to four procedures which comes directly from the accounting treatment. So the, these easy marks directly come from the accounting treatment. So what, what you can do now is revise all the accounting standards, whether IES and IUPRS so that this P7 paper or the AAA paper becomes easy for you. Without the accounting treatment, 
you won't be able to attempt this risk question as well as the audit procedure part. And this, this is being tested not only here, this is being tested in the review and report section as well.